going into the classrooms, but for teacher use, for administrative, like the one, I think it was Gavin, said you know, the teacher uses it to take it, take attendance and take the lunch count, uh, and then maybe show us a couple of things to work with. Um, and that's where I think there's a gap within schools in that administrations are worried about cyberbullying, they're worried about the kids getting out onto the internet, what they're going to be doing with the devices, uh, and teachers don't know. So it's kind of a new process with them. Uh, I, in my class, my kids do have the tablets. They, they walk around with the tablets all the time. Uh, they have a center. They know when they're going to be working with it. Uh, I work with teachers to help set up classrooms, to have classroom management. Work with administrators to be able to say, you know, okay, these are the, some of the things that you can do to make sure that it is a safe environment. Communicating with the parents, making sure the parents know and having the input back and forth. Because the kids are coming to school now. I teach kindergarten here in Flemington. The kids are coming to school with these little devices. They know how to use these because their parents have had smartphones for a couple years. And so they're very comfortable with it. And they do want to share with the teachers. And that input of, you know, we can share with some of the programs that we're doing at home that they've exposed to come in and show the teachers. Uh, and one of the other ones where I think it was also uh, Gavin talked about the only time that he gets to use a computer program is when he goes to speech class. And right now here in the state of New Jersey, that has been what the main rollout has for kids getting devices in the kids' hand have been for the special ed, for the special services, for doing speech, for doing adaptive learning, uh, for classified students. Um, but it's you know slowly moving into uh, coming into the classroom on a on a full time basis. And the other thing, from a perspective of teachers, uh, we have a we have a generation of teachers who have seen you know trends. Everybody is saying, okay, this is the next new thing. This is the next big thing. Uh, and I can tell you, many many teachers said to me, okay, yeah, they gave me this technology, the desktop that sat over there. They gave me a laptop. Now the laptop. They get, my district gave me a laptop. They said, don't let the kids use it. Okay, well, that, you know, that's, that doesn't do me a lot of good. I don't use my laptop very much. I use my laptop to do uh, the, the school issue, to do those administrative stuff, to do the attendance, to, to put into the power school and everything. But other than that, it gets closed down. Or I might plug in, uh, I have an interactive whiteboard that I let the kids use, but they don't actually touch the keyboard or the, or the laptop. But now teachers, are starting to see because everybody is getting the iPad, they're using their iPads at home, and now they're they're getting more and more open to, okay, I can use this, I can use uh, the camera, I can record the kids, uh, and they're seeing the power of of this device that is very simple. Uh, what they don't want to have is all these different programs where they're trying to track everything and have to one more administrative thing. Uh, it's very much you know keep it simple, record the kids, um, making stories. Uh, so they can hear their feedback, so they can hear the enunciation of the, in, as they're developing their speech. So they can slow down with the, what that word is and break it down into parts. Uh, another way for them to get the syllables and get the letter sound relationships. Uh, so do, do you think we're on a tipping point in terms of the Moore's Law and technology and Steve Jobs and, and everything has brought us, Google and YouTube, it can't be stopped, this force is going to tip and the schools are going to start changing? Do you think we're and where are we on that shift? I think we are at that tipping point because I think it's the, the veteran teachers now who have been in the classroom for a while are starting to see the value of this and seeing how simple it is to, to implement this technology. It's not like the other technology in the past where it was a bulky thing or it was something that had to be done in isolation. These devices and tablets are walking around always. And as teachers, we're always trying to teach kids that you know, learning doesn't, isn't just within the school classroom from 8 to 3 or 8 to 3.30, you know, learning takes part all the time. And these devices allow the kids to see that and it empowers the teachers. So the advice might be to get smart on um, school purchasing app programs, make sure you know, to know how those business mechanics work and make it very friendly for schools. Um, I remember Motion Math did, in -app, did that in-app sales thing. I told them, you're basically never going to sell that to a school because the teacher's not Imagine a textbook with chapter one, it's the first page of chapter two is, it's glued shut. You have to put a quarter in to get it. It's not going to work. Teachers don't all have credit cards as well. You yeah. have to work with that business model. Uh, I want to shift over to you guys. Uh, you, you've been in the business for a long time. Um, 
What, what advice do you have, or where do you see that where we're at right now in that whole change? Um, I, I actually think we're probably a little further away from the tipping point um, than Chris suggested, because I actually, I mean, I, I think everything you said about the tablet and the, and the, you know, the accessibility and usability is all true. Um, I don't see a cohesive pattern with schools and school systems and administrations, though, to utilize that technology. And I don't see the maturity yet in those systems to do that. So you ask me, and I'm telling you, you know, I'd say, well, this to me, we're getting closer. I mean, this is really great, um, but you know, I can, I'm not sure we're going to make that to point because the closer we get, I mean, uh, people just become, I think, too enamored of technology. And you mean tablets? Hard I'm hardware. Not, I'm, I'm, not hardware. Saying, I'm not going to say tablets. Okay. Um, Hardware. I mean, it that's not the answer. I mean, frankly, we, like you said, we've been in this industry a long time. We've seen this before. I mean, basically, you buy the equipment, and you know this, you, you already said that. They bought the equipment, it sits in the corner. Why? Not because there was anything wrong with the equipment. It's because there was really no plan, no cohesive you know, thought about how the equipment's really going to be used, how it's going to be supported. When something is wrong, who's going to actually answer the questions? The teacher's too busy having to teach, to deal with technology. So if something doesn't work, you know, if, if my Wi-Fi is down or whatever, it's like, you know, the whole class is disruptive. I mean, so you, know, you just have to have a plan to deal with all these things. And that's, that's why I say, you know, there's hope, but we're still having to deal with many of the same questions we've dealt with for many years. Margaret? I think we're seeing a lot more frustration this year than we were a year ago from superintendents and curriculum directors about how to curate the content how to keep it fresh for a kid, how to individualize it, and how to collect big data using iPads. That's really the pushback we get time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> how, basically, big data for iPads, how to curate the content in a meaningful way. So say I'm teaching second graders math, and I've got six different second graders at six different levels. How do I provide this, the, you know, the, the, the apps that all of them need? Okay. And so they're all, we see a lot of frustration on the part of the teachers because they realize what a powerful device it is. What's the big data problem? Um, because the apps don't talk to one another. So essentially, if you look at a dashboard, it's everything's reporting individually and it's all apples to oranges to grapefruit to, okay. and nobody's come up with a centralized system that basically uses one constant rubric and algorithm to put it all in front of a teacher in a meaningful way. Is Common Core helpful? That, that'll help a lot. And it's, it's Actually, it will be helpful. I mean, I, now, I see that you talked to the teacher, and I saw that. Yeah, yeah. 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 See that I was look. telling. You see that look? Yeah. So are you saying create Let, a maybe education sound just like game sound? I think that would be fantastic. So, Don, you got a. Uh, I was going to say, uh, if you're involved in education, you know that the, um, there are new uh, national tests being created for the Common Core, and the government has funded uh, some consortia of states to develop new online assessment systems to go with those tests that are supposed to come online in about 2015. And one of the biggest parts of that development is, to, is they're contracting with people to create what they call technology enhanced items. Okay, so a, a, a certain amount of the items on these tests that everyone's going to have to deal with are ones that you res that student responds to with the same kind of interface that they're using on a pad right now. And Washington State's actually probably, they've already implemented that as a, in a beta format. So, you know, it's uh, how, how can you deny the need? to have teachers and students familiar with the technology when you've mandated that they're all going to get tested that way. Well, if there's good news. I mean, there is, there's a lot of attention and, and almost no one is saying that, you know, we want, there is a definitely emphasis on spending more and buying more iPads and equipping the hardware. The, the fear is that it's just the purchase comes before the, actually the plan. And, and so, so, I mean, if I want to go to the good side, flip the good side, I've, I've long been a proponent since our, our original business was with libraries and, you know, I, um, that formed the core of our business for many years. But I've long said that there should be, you know, the child is the same child, whether he's in a library, he's in school, he's at home. So there should be, you know, the mobility of the child's work should be there. Regardless of where he does it, he should be able to access it. And so in that sense, you know, the mobility of the platforms is helpful. 
And you know, certainly we as a technology firm, like many other technology firms, are working to make best of breed in terms of um, you know we're, we're in terms of adding assessments uh, to our product, in terms of being able to report children's progress. You know, there's a whole layer to our products that the child never sees that we work really hard to make you know, for the professionals behind the scenes to make their lives easier. So, we're not alone, I'm not saying we are, it's not, I'm not here to sell <coughs> AWE, but, um, but, you know, the trend in the education industry is that a lot of people are paying attention to this, and the technology is enabling that, and I actually think it will bring us to, I, I wrote down your quote, I'm not sure I could get it word for word, but you were saying we're, you know, trying to get into another, a second um, intellectual renaissance. Yes, um, exactly. And I think, you know, that is, I do actually think we're getting By these guys that were sitting here just a few minutes ago. And I think the library solution that, if you want to see my ideal answer to the question, it's right over there. It's free public access to powerful technology. I want a Wii U that anyone could walk off the street, sit down, take the best software that Miyamoto just thought of, plug it in, and participate in the culture of games that normally has a $60 price tag, plus you have to have the HD screen and all of that. And there's a supervisor that's there to provide Maslow's support system. So, and then other kids can come and socialize. So that's it right over there. You can also check it out and, and just have access to the digital culture. I think that's critical from the um, Vygotsky and the social perspective, because we're all moving through this together as a big culture. We're moving into the information space and so the idea that um, today, the good news is, more good news, when we were in North Dakota, all the teachers had devices in their pockets and they were familiar. Back when I used to do teacher training, you'd have to sit down and say, this is a mouse, and they'd lift it up and all of that. Today it's like, oh yeah, hold on, I got a call, it's voicemail, memory, variables, screens, interfaces. It's all common, so we're through that. So I think... I think times are changing. I think it's, it, you know, I, I, whether ready or not, here it comes. Yeah. Um, what do you gentlemen think, uh, especially you, Chris, about the Khan Academy and like a flipped classroom structure? I like the Khan Academy a lot. Um, I reviewed his book as well. And he, I like his philosophy in that it, it's not to replace the teacher, it's to free up the time for the teacher to get to know the, the children that are in their classroom. Uh, and that's what I worry about. Uh, that too much, if we, if we worry too much about statistics and, and standardized testing and, and we have to be at this point, at this point through the year, that we devalue the human interaction between the teacher and the student uh, and what the teacher, what their value is to learn. Uh, I think, especially with newer teachers coming out, they're saying, okay, well, I just need to follow this curriculum. I need to follow this lesson plan that's laid out for me because this is proven to meet you know, the, the assessment spots where the kids are going to be at. And if the kids don't make it, well, then I followed this along. And there's, a, there's kind of an excuse with it, where the Khan Academy allows teachers that freedom to go back and to work with the kids where they're at, to give them the support, the information that they, that they need to, to meet those kids. Um, so I, I'm very much supportive of, of the Khan Academy and that whole philosophy. They, learning happens all the time. Right. And the kids should be able to find somewhere to go to to find information. Teachers should be able to go to, to somewhere to find information uh, about what their subject is. And that's what Khan Academy, iTunes, you, um, you know, those are great resources where it's, you're getting different perspectives that, uh, that can help you. Yeah, I think blended learning is definitely here to stay in the rotational models. It's just a matter of figuring out which ones work for which age groups. I think one thing that's a pushback you're going to see in the next couple of years is the distance learning community is pushing very hard in this space in blended learning, and particularly for our age group in this room, for most of us, you know, the social aspect of the brick and mortar schoolhouse is so critical that, and that Chris was, this is what Chris was alluding to, that we've got to be careful we don't go too far in that direction. But I think, I think we, might, we might actually get to a point where the kids have the power, they're using the technology to assess us. They're actually videotaping us, measuring us, what we're doing. They're capturing our information. <laughs> because they have the power, and we can't stop them. So I think it's awesome that you're capturing this. That's great. <laughs> because they, because you've got the power. What are you going to do with this? Put it on YouTube. Show this to my mother. All right. <laughs> 
Yeah, Jim, sorry. Um, what are you finding the parents want? So like at AWE, do you get feedback? Are they pushing for more technology in the classroom? Are they interested in progress reports, in anything? Yeah, that keeps, keeps bubbling up. We've got to kill this, slay this beast, so. <laughs> yeah, we've heard some interesting things uh, uh, today, I think, about progress reports. And I, and I think um, you know, we're not as much, and one part of my answer to your question is, we're not as much experts on parents, per se, because we, have not been a cons our product base has not been direct marketing to consumers, and yes, we will have more as we go down this path. We'll have more and more, you know, to work with parents. But our primary focus has been working with the schools, and we're very definitely, you know, adding progress tracking and things that will help a teacher report progress against those Common Core standards. We're all about trying to make the lives easier of the people who work with our products as well as of course more effective which means for their teacher to make the teachers more effective um, when it comes to parents um, we also you know we have a portfolio report already we're already you know ready soon we'll be you know ready to mail even to kindergarten or to pre-k pre we'll be doing observational assessments you know that can actually have you know those assessments you know mailed to parents and so on and so forth so for us it's kind of new so it's kind of I can't give you a direct answer from, from experience, um, but I have, go ahead. Um, well, I was just going to say, it was, I, I think it's very expensive for people to build that into their product. And I think as we saw earlier today, it may or may not be worthwhile. Because I think we've found the parents that we've actually talked to in feedback loops, it's a very small percentage of the parents who actually want that data. But for the schools, the administration, the buyers, the people who are going to make this, who are going to drive this in a big way, it's they want it as a checkbook checklist item, if nothing else. <coughs> well, and a teacher wants to have the ability to send something off to a parent I yeah. easily if they so choose. Well, and, and the, I mean, the best parents, if you will, are always going to want that. Um, yeah. the, your more involved parents are always going to want that. Unfortunately, that's not a huge percentage of our of the total install base for for any product. I would say. And, and from the school perspective, you're saying that there's actually a real need for a standardized system for people to line up, hey, our app is, you know, going to help development in these levels and this sort of correlating performance in an app to I'm not saying it's necessarily necessary, but I think it would help you certainly sell it into the education space. Okay. Another feature. I think and that's another way you know, where, where school administrations are probably improving a little bit because they didn't used to even ask for efficacy. And now, you know, there's more attention being paid to can you prove this is really effective. So that's actually a good thing. Yeah. Um, but there's really not a whole lot of it. Surprisingly, hey, we've got a lot of parents here. You know, frankly, efficacy studies to date really <coughs> suck. I mean, just to give it a word. To the nth degree. <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, a lot of money has been spent on education. A lot, as a taxpayer, a lot of money has been wasted. So, I mean, that's, I'm not going to back away from that statement since I'm a taxpayer. Um, so, we want to demand efficacy in the system. I agree. But also, as, as a parent, a lot of that reported data that comes back from the schools, it, it's, it's, it's not really reflective of your child's learning. You know, a lot of it's just saying this is how well they did on some game. This is how well they did on 25 math problems. And so you get the numbers and you get to see that, oh, compared to other kids, but when it comes down to it, it's, it's, not, it's not really giving you that much information. Um, it's, it's so... And that's that catch-22 of teachers relying upon what's here as opposed to what their judgment is interacting with the child. Because I do have those conversations more and more with parents in the past two years of, okay, well, how, what are my kids get, getting out of this using the tablet, using this device? Uh, what you have to teach me as to why this is a good thing. Uh, so parents are asking that, but they're asking it to the teachers. Uh, and that's where the teachers need to be prepared and have to understand and have to be able to look at it as well and, I, and realize that it's a balance. And I wonder if we could provide more of that to teachers. Because that, that's what I do. When, if, if all we're giving the teachers is say, well, you could tell them it's a 67. Yeah. Right. All right, so um, I have the answer to this. And I'll tell you tonight. <laughs> tonight, I, I'm really happy to tell you I think we might have a rock star making an appearance, another second rock star, uh, actually a, rap, a rapper that's going to drop in. Um, so that'll be exciting. Um, try to sit next to somebody different on the bus when you come back and meet somebody new, share another app, keep the app sharing going. Um, and uh, I'd like to introduce Addison real quickly. Addison's one of our testers, uh, just came in in the middle part, um, helps 
keep, keep me smart on games and, and everything else. I'm doing a lot of writing, really getting to be an excellent writer. And then Carol, uh, my, my good friend and uh, co-writer, right? Uh, <laughs> done so much work on MediaTek and really taken it to heart. And without her, it wouldn't be uh, nearly, probably be closed. <laughs> so, yeah. And the support of the library and the town and everybody has gotten behind the concept. So, uh, appreciate your, your helping. Um, and if you wouldn't mind um, stacking your chairs on the way out. Uh, last word? I was, I'm, I'm sorry, it's the last word. But no. I just want you had asked me to talk a little bit to Duster Magic, so I just want to maybe just do one Duster yeah, go ahead. Magic, perhaps. Wrap it up for it. Um, because it also maybe helps define a little bit to those who don't know AWE. We basically actually take and re re our product is an amalgam of the best of breed content. So we've been working with many of the folks here for many years. And, um, and over the years, why we come is we come and listen and see if there's any places where we can maybe add some of your content to our product. So over the years, I would just say, without naming any names, a few years ago, we saw a really, really beautiful product. Um, the developer chose not to use even a mouse, okay, just a, strictly a keyboard. We actually incorporated that into our product. It was so beautiful. It was such, you know, the idea of a child sitting down and walking with, you know, through the parent with, with the application was a beautiful thing. And it was wonderful when it happened. But the reality was, it turned out to be dust because, you know, who, even in, even in that day and age a few years ago, who just wants to use a keyboard? So, I mean, yeah, the interface is important. The interface is changing, so even multi-touch is not going to be the final interface in the business, so just don't get too fixed on hardware, okay, is one of my messages. And then finally, what we're going to say, some magic, and this is my, my only advertisement is actually for, for one of the content providers here. He didn't ask for an advertisement. But our product um, has, I guess, long partnered, and uh, if I can find it here while I'm trying to talk. Yeah, one more. <laughs> yeah. one more. Yeah, exactly. What do you got there? And math, right? There we go. That's the funniest looking iPad I ever I was just going to say, <laughs> what is it? It's not an iPad. You this ripped the monitor off a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, we don't sell this, folks. This is an Asus. Um, it's a high-end uh, Asus tablet, 12 inch. So if you want a big screen, you have to go to something sure. like this. So, um, so I'm not actually trying to say we sell that, but I am saying, well, we have Darren's Math Doodles. It's one of the great products. It's also, of course, available on the iPad. Um, but and Darren's been a great uh, collaborator and coordinator with, with us, as well as several other people here. So I apologize if I didn't signal out everyone. So it would be an, this is an example of a small publisher who is being. Um, you're, you guys are helping to get that in into schools and libraries. So it's a way. It's another avenue. Another way to get it in. We are, it's almost advertising now, but we're in 40% of all libraries in the United States and in Canada. And so we have a pretty good presence. And we are, as the last couple of years, we're also targeting the education market as well with features that are specific to the education market. So that's cool. All right. Well, thank, thanks for uh, sharing your wisdom today, Chris. <laughs>